Hello, I am Ollie Bear, and today I'm going to be showing you the Triangulo Lab WHX, which, as you can probably tell just from seeing it, it is Will Galluccio's new version of the Ibanez WH10, which we all know and love. It's got a few modern improvements and upgrades and features that I just want to talk about before I get into the sounds. So, first thing is, it's made of ABS, which is 3D printed. It's not going to break like the original, but it also feels like the original. There's something about the metal ones, which yes, they're really strong, but because they're heavier and more rigid and then slightly less flex, they don't feel like a WH-10 under your foot. They do sound like it, but they don't feel like it. And uh, I think that actually makes a really big difference. The fact that this is such a lightweight pedal, your foot can rest on it and freely rock backwards and forwards just the way that you want it to. You don't have to think, it's like effortless. Um, this one is like moving your foot through butter, whereas the metal one is almost like, uh, I don't know, through rocks or something. <laughs> it just doesn't feel quite right. And this one feels like you're using the original pedal, which is super cool. Um, looks really nice as well. He's got this really nice purple base and then the black treadle classic mint green rubber pad with his Triangulo Lab logo on it, which is really, really nice. Another cool thing that he's done is he's implemented the original buffer circuit, um, but he's used better quality components, which means that you don't get that massive tone suck that the Ibanez versions give you. Um, you might be thinking, well, why not just use True Bypass? Well, when you've got the buffer, your output impedance is set by that buffer. And that massively changes how the pedal, even when it's off, interacts with other pedals in your chain. And I'll get to that in a bit when we get to the sounds. It's especially noticeable with the JF Fuzz, which is Will's um, Fuzz Right clone. And you're gonna find that with any other sort of germanium fuzz pedal in your chain. They work best when there is a buffer after them. So when you're using a true bypass WH10, you're not getting the true effect that the WH10 has on your overall signal in terms of how it interacts with other pedals. So it's really cool that this has got the original buffer circuit, so the original output impedance, but without the tone suck. So it's like a win-win. It's the sound of true bypass, but it works the same way as the original. Another really good positive about having that buffer is that Will has been able to use this switch, which is more like the original switch, not like a true bypass switch, which is much bigger and more difficult to turn on and off. And the way that he has very, very carefully and meticulously balanced the height of the switch and this foam piece here means you can turn this pedal on and off just by pushing on the toe which you can't do with the Ibanez ones. You usually have to, you have to kind of really, really stand on it really hard because it's got this extra foam here. Um, or you sometimes even have to like rock it back a bit and then push forward again because it will get sort of stuck on the switch. But this one is literally on and off, tapping at the toe, just like the original. So it feels amazing. It's also got a volume control. Yes, it doesn't have a knob. It is not supposed to have a knob. This is just the potentiometer. I think if it had a knob on it, it would probably get knocked around too much and your settings would change, uh, especially with it being so close to the output jack here as well. But by having the volume control maximum, it's like the full boost that you get from the original gray WH-10. You can reduce it to closer to the sound of the black WH-10 which used a different circuit and had less volume boost. Um, and the way Will has implemented the volume control is different to the way that other pedal builders do. So I think that other pedal builders usually put the volume control as the very last piece of the signal chain in the circuit. So that's got the kind of final effect on your tone. And a volume control changes impedance and it's going to introduce some phase shift and it means that when you change the volume it's going to change the sound of the pedal and it's going to change how it interacts with other pedals. I don't know how he's done it 
I haven't got into that much detail with him, but Will has put the volume control more part of the circuit so that it doesn't actually have any negative or any impact effect on your tone whatsoever. It is literally just able to control the volume without it changing the output impedance. So that's really cool. I guess it's before the, the buffer circuit or something. Um, so that's a really, really cool feature. It's got the depth pot on the side, just like the original one. The guitar and the bass switch has been moved up to here onto a nice uh, quality metal switch instead of the plastic one on the side. It's got the wet dry, uh, the, the wet, sorry, just the dry output as well, which nobody ever uses, but it's there just in case that you want to. Input, output, standard nine volt power. Um, and there's one other really cool thing that I will just mention. And that's that with the originals and the reissues, the potentiometer inside would get very, very scratchy with dust. Uh, and that's because it's just not very well protected in there. Pedals on a pedal board are exposed to all sorts of crap from our feet and dust. And uh, the Ibanez WH10 was very bad at keeping that stuff out. So, I mean, especially in, I can speak from my experience after having my version 2 Ibanez WH10 for about six months, it was like <laughs> rubbish. And yes, you can spray contact cleaner into it, but it's not actually cleaning it. It's not removing the dust. It's just making it wet and moving it around and it's gonna come back eventually. Will, being the genius that he is, has somehow capsulated the potentiometer in here so that dust can't get into it. So this pedal is gonna last so much longer. You don't have to worry about cleaning it. You don't have to worry that it's gonna start going scratchy. It's literally gonna last as long as the life of the potentiometer, and that's gonna be years. So I think we've covered about everything. Let's get this on the floor and listen to a few sounds.
Okay, so there's one more thing which I want to show you, um, and that's what I was talking about earlier at the start of the video in terms of the buffer and how it reacts with other pedals, specifically the JF Fuzz or any kind of germanium fuzz pedal that's got like a vintage design. 
So because this is buffered and this comes directly after the JF fuzz, this is going to be buffering the fuzz. And on the like the output of the fuzz, it's different to the issue of like having certain buffers before a fuzz face. This is completely different. When I engage this, it sounds thick and full. <laughs> And if the DS2 is on, and then I turn this on, we get that really nice uh, kind of like synthy frequency shift, um, a slight boost. Now I'm going to change this out for this version, which I have, which is kind of like a Frankenstein of various, I think it started life as a V2 and then someone else modified it and then Will Coluccio modified it for me. But the thing is, is this is true bypass. And I'm going to show you, I'm literally just going to take this out. I'm going to put this in, in exactly the same place in the chain. And hear how different the fuzz sounds. Where's all the volume gone? And with the DS2. So there might be people out there who have got this pedal and they've got a true bypass WH10 directly after it and they're thinking why the hell is this pedal so quiet? Um, I've actually kind of simplified my board just for this demonstration because actually the Barbonera has got a preamp which can solve this issue but it still comes further in the chain than the WH10. So if you were setting up a chain at home which was like DS2 into JF Fuzz into a true bypass WH10, you're going to have this issue. But like I showed you before, just by putting Will's buffered WH10 in the chain, There you go.